what they've started this year with. Indeed. Well, we can see there the lineup for the men's. So here we go. You can see just the shot from the drone there. Paddlers, paddlers facing towards us. As Rebby said, tactics very, very important in that race. So to the left of the screen was lane one. To the right of the screen was lane nine. We'll see. Here we go. There's the shot that we want. We can see there it is lane five and lane six got away well there. So the Czechs getting away well. The Danes getting away well. And, uh, and the Australians yes. as well. Well spotted, yeah. Australians uh, over there in lane three away. Well, Portuguese perhaps not quite as good start as we expect. A little bit different maybe to what Fernando Pimenta would do in his K1, but they're there or thereabouts. And as you said, we may well see quite different tactics in this race. Yeah, there, there's going to be, just like we saw in the C1000, there's going to be uh, crews here that are kind of come through the end of the race because it's a long race. You, you need to get to the end and you need to be able to to last um, that three to four minutes. Indeed, yeah, we've seen some amazing times of the likes of Hoff and Shop, haven't we? You know, uh, not much over three minutes, almost a K4 time in the K2. We may not see quite that quickly in this race, but uh, young Van der Westhausen there, only 19 years old, Pierre, but he saw his older brother win a gold medal at Tokyo and perhaps he wants a gold medal for himself and he's putting himself in a pretty good position to get one here in the thousand meters at Rechitze but lane six that is the Danes they have got something to say about it as have the Portuguese next to them who are coming through just nicely now and being tracked as well by the other Danish crew of Farstad and Bok in lane eight so lane six looking pretty good at the moment yeah, they're all they're all looking controlled, and it looks like this is when the the different tactics will kind of come into play. You can see some some boats catching up, some boats going a bit bit back. Yeah, you can. You've got three next to each other there, haven't you? You've got Denmark, Portugal. Denmark once again fighting out out there over to the left of your screen at the minute. The Australians on the right, just trying desperately to get on terms with the Danish. Now there's the Portuguese. Fernando Pimento, well, he's huffing and puffing a bit, but that boat is moving well. Yeah, and I wonder if the three of them down down this end, kind of lane six, seven and eight, they can see each other so they can kind of fight against each other, whereas the Australians are a bit out of the picture, so they won't really see what's going on. Yeah, they've got to do their own race and really ominously coming through just nicely and smoothly. The Portuguese have got a decent lead. So we're in the final quarter of this race. In fact, we've less than that, only about 150 metres to go. And if these two can hold it together, then they've got a great chance of taking the gold medal. Some nice close-ups there. The Danish are holding it together. But as we pan out, we will see that the Portuguese are still leading the way. Now, less than 100 metres to go within the Red Boys. Quick look round from Fernando Pimenta to his right, but he needs to look to his left because the Danish that have been tracking them all the way, Farstad and Bok, are beginning to put them under pressure. And the young Joao Duarte has to hold on here. He's going to. It's going to be a fantastic win for the Portuguese. The Danish in second and look to be like the Australians quite possibly with a great back end. A nice final 200 metres from them. Maybe just... emotional. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy for Joao for, to, to be training with his... Sounds like they're training together now. Um, training with his his idol and yeah. like legend as he said and for, for Fernando to give him an opportunity like this it must mean a lot to him